Let's learn now how to access the automation layer for MIDI regions. It can be accessed by tapping right here on the automation icon. And here I can insert any type of automation, both at the track level, meaning volume, pan, solo, mute, and so on, but also at the MIDI level, which means I can change MIDI volume, MIDI pan, and any of the 128 MIDI controllers right here. Of course, I can also change the pitch band, aftertouch, and program change. So it's very, very powerful. I can also access different parameters of the software synthesizer that I have chosen for this specific track. In this case, it's Alchemy. You can have a lot of fun automating a lot of parameters here. Of course, we can also do automation not only on MIDI tracks, but on any track available in the mixing board. And this is more of a traditional automation where we can automate not only the volume and the pan, but also any parameter of any effects inserted on the channel strip and our sends. We can do automation in two ways. We can do it in real time or graphically using our pencil. Let's learn first how to do it in real time. To do automation in real time on a channel strip is actually very, very easy. The first thing I need to do is to set the track automation in record mode. And I do so right here where it says read. As you can see, I can do automation as a touch or latch option. What's the difference? If I'm in touch mode, automation data are going to be recorded only when I move something when I move a parameter on my channel strip. If I don't move it or if I don't touch it, automation for that parameter is not going to be recorded. This is the safest way to do automation. If I switch to latch mode, on the other hand, automation won't be recorded until I move something or I touch something on the channel strip. But when I will release that parameter, it will still be recording. So it's a little bit more dangerous to use latch because if you forget, you might erase automation data that were already there. So in general, I recommend starting with touch. Just remember that if you are in touch and you release a parameter, that parameter will go back to whatever data is present on the track at any given moment. So let's try. Let's say I want to do a fade in for this channel from the beginning. So I'm gonna enable touch for the track. I'm gonna bring my fader to zero and then I'm gonna press play. Remember to press play, not record. Record is to record either audio or MIDI data on the track. Play in conjunction with touch allows me to record automation. So I'm gonna press play. I'm going to bring the volume up slowly. And now automation was recorded. How can I see this automation? Well, first of all, I can go back to the beginning. Now switch back to read, which means read the data of the automation, but don't record anything and press play. And I can see my fader going up as I recorded it a minute ago. Now let's try latch. I'm going to tap latch. I'm going to go back to zero. I'm going to press play. I'm going to start moving my fader. Now the difference is that when I release the fader, I release it right now. It will still record automation, even if I release the fader. If I was in touch, when I release the fader, the fader would go down to whatever level of automation is going to encounter right after I released it. So it really depends on the situation which one to use. As I said, in general, if there's no automation at all, touch is probably the best option. In the same way, I can record automation for pen. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to make sure I'm in touch. I'm going to press play. And now I'm going to move 
the pen. And again, if I go back and I switch to read, now when I press play, my track will be reading pen automation as well. And as I said, you can automate any parameter of any effects inserted on the channel strip, including your sends. I can also automate parameters of a synthesizer. So I'm going to open up my retro synth here. I'm going to make sure I'm in automation touch. I'm going to open the parameter of my synthesizer. And for example, I could change the filter, the cutoff frequency of the filter. So I'm going to press play. I'm going to start moving the automation for the filter. Now if I go back and switch my track to read, I'm going to see the cutoff filter also moving according to the automation I just recorded. So as you can see, very, very powerful and very creative. Since you can automate anything that is inserted on a channel strip, the sky is really the limit when it comes to creativity. I can also insert and edit automation graphically. To do so, we're going to switch back to our track list view and I'm going to tap on the automation layer right here. As soon as I switch my automation layer, I can see all the automation that I recorded in real time previously. So for the first track, I can switch the automation layer I'm going to see by tapping right here. At the moment, I'm looking at the last parameter I recorded, which was the my cutoff frequency of the synthesizer inserted on this channel. But I also recorded volume, so I can switch to volume, and as the volume fade in I recorded previously. I also recorded pan, so I can go to main and look at pan, and that's the pan that I just recorded previously. So any automation parameters of any inserts, sands, or software synthesizer inserted on the channel can be created or edited from this view. If I don't like this pen automation, I can totally edit it. I can grab my brush tool and just re-edit it. If I want to insert a single point, I'm going to use my pencil tool. If I want to move one or more data points, I'm going to get the Move tool, select that point, and just move it up and down or left and right. If I want to select several points, I'm going to use my Multi-Select tool, tap and drag, switch back to my Move tool, and now I can move all these points together. So as you can see, it's really, really powerful. And you can use with the brush tool, your Apple Pencil to draw automation. Let me grab it here. I have my Apple Pencil in my hand and I can easily draw automation with my Apple Pencil. The resolution at which you are inserting the data depends on the snap option that you selected here. So if I want a finer data insertion point, I'm going to just select 16 nodes. Now with my brush tool and my pencil, I'm inserting data every 16 nodes. So it's really beautiful when you use the pencil. You can also use your finger to do so, but with the pencil it's a little bit more accurate. And again, I can access all the information data right here and select any of the parameters available for automation. So again, you can do automation either in real time through the mixing board by selecting 
the type of automation that you're going to choose, either attach or latch, press play and move the parameter, or you can just insert it right here by activating the automation layer and then choosing the parameter for each track that you want to automate. I love automation. You can be very creative. It really improves your mixes and you can just have a lot of fun using it.